Hi guys. So, I'm going to talk about a couple of things in this video. It's sort of going to be a catch-all thing. Uh, I keep saying I'm not going to do high reviews. Well, I don't say I'm not going to do them. I just only like to do them. But I'm going to do some anyway. So, there's a lot of differences between how the Quest 2 and the Index ship. Like, the Index ships kind of as a um, largely complete unit. I think there's a couple must-haves for it. I personally think the USB radiator by Kiwi Design is pretty much required. Keeping the index lenses in particular cool uh, is really important to the longevity of the device since it's kind of a warty beast. And it just actually really helps with your own user comfort. I wouldn't say the index is hotter to wear than the Quest 2 by any means, but it's always nice to be cool. And the USB radiator by Kiwi Design actually makes a pretty significant difference. It's very pleasant. It's a great product. I would definitely recommend it for any indexer out there. And obviously, you're going to need a VR pulley system. If you're going to do any sort of room scale with your index, you're going to need a pulley system. I have the pulley system from AMVR. It was inexpensive, and I've heard it's basically the same thing as what you get from Kiwi Design. It works pretty well for me. There's no escaping the fact that running a cable is fucking annoying. That's just part of owning an index. You get to deal with the thick, heavy, inflexible cable, and that's just part of it. On the other hand, you don't have to worry about it running out of batteries in the middle of your game. So yeah, either way, uh, I would say those are things you kind of need for your index. At least, at least the bare minimum, you're going to need that pulley system. So, you know, it's not like the index comes 100% complete. But, you know, you, you're going to have just fine with it. The Quest 2 sort of goes the other way. You get a fairly bare bones setup. And that's partly why it's so cheap, right? Uh, and you can accessorize it later if you want. I haven't initially done that. I only started to dip my toes into it just a little bit. So I bought myself a pair of grips for the controllers, specifically ones that have a knuckle thing. Um, there's one thing that really irritates the shit out of me about the uh, Quest controllers is the need to constantly hold on to them. I find it very immersion breaking. I've always hated that right away. They're not an especially immersive controller, truth be told. And even adding the, the uh, grip strap doesn't totally fix the fact that the grip button is a button, right? When you're interacting with something, you reach out and you press a button. It's not the same experience you get with the index controllers where you reach out and just grab something. It's a lot better. That grab sensor is finicky and Valve did not do a good job of implementing it. It does work, but what you have to do is sort of configure it to about where you like it per game. What Valve should have done is how do you configure your own comfortable grip strength levels and just fed that information to the games. So that would have been the correct way to do it. But they fucked it up. So now, per game, you often have to fuck around with the settings. Not every game, but a lot of games. Vaults of the Wizard was a good example. That was totally unplayable until they tweaked the grip strength settings. You don't have those issues on the Quest 2, but on the other hand, you just reach out and you press a button. It's just not as immersive. And especially if you have a game where you're obliged to hold down grip for a long time, like actually a lot of games. So I find that irritating. And having to, having to continually hold on to the controller has always been very immersion breaking as well. It's just irritating. because You can't relax your hand, right? Well, for not very much money, you can actually have a setup that's quite a bit more comfortable, which is, again, an AMVR product. And it's cheap. It's like 20 bucks. And I'll show you. And here. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Not all that different than what you get from your index. In a lot of ways, you can adjust the length. Grips on. This isn't going you know, is to fall out. It's adjustable. It's easy to follow, uh, easy to adjust. Straightforward. The grips itself are sort of a hard, rubbery sort of thing. I made sure to actually spend some time playing a game with these, that it wouldn't be uh, a problem in some way, some unforeseen consequence, nothing of the sort. 
this is very comfortable and uh, fits nicely this is good for 20 bucks uh, I would definitely say yeah these are great I wish I got them earlier the elastic part here well I say elastic it's a little elasticized fabric it's pretty stretchy and on the inside you probably can't see well, a little bit in the glare yeah that's sort of like a grippy rubber bit and that holds nicely doesn't get unpleasant or sweaty yeah now they advertise that this grip there you can see it uh, prevents your hand from getting sweaty I don't think that's probably true but you know it's pleasant uh, I like these these are a good addition for 20 bucks I say that's a steal so the next thing is the elite strap this is not the actual elite strap this is the elite strap uh, from or zero this is 40 bucks so it's cheaper than most of the options um, I'm hoping the idea is because with the actual uh, official elite strap the problem is every other day you log into like one of the oculus subreddits actually every day and you will see somebody whose elite strap is fucking broken and Facebook clearly has no problem with this they'll just keep warranting it out until your warranty's out that's just annoying so I just kind of refuse to get it so I got this which is basically exact same friggin thing but from somebody else and I'm hoping it doesn't suffer from the same flaws this is a lot better than the stock strap right away D definitely um probably adds a little bit of weight not a whole lot you're not going to notice um got a nice cushion on the back it's pretty good it's comfortable this won't bother you it's just adjustable with the usual wheel actually just like on the index yeah this is a good purchase uh, sort of smooth here instead of a fabric that's interesting actually I kind of like it a little better this fabric is going to get you know your hair oils over time and stuff this sort of um plastic strip won't so I actually can say that better 40 bucks that seems pretty good uh somebody I'm pretty sure I saw some review of reference this is possibly being 3d printed it's definitely not this is not a 3d printed product no part of this is 3d printed that wouldn't necessarily be a problem honestly but no nice reasonable cushion it fit me quite well I uh I like this it's a good addition now it makes me think that there's some other additions I might also want to get at some point I'm looking at a third party battery pack since the official battery pack has to be their elite strap battery pack which fucking breaks no 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 that is unacceptable fix your shit but there's third party options that's probably more along the lines of what I'm thinking some kind of battery holder and there's a fair amount of these and I think uh EMVR might have one I'll, I would I've had good luck with that company in the past them and Kiwi I kind of trust so yeah I'll consider that and I think at some point I'd love to get some better headphones for this I have a pair of headphones but they just don't work who knows why doesn't matter so yeah that's thought um I did test this out of course playing some games I was playing legendary tales and actually since I'm talking about legendary tales this is really the way to play your legendary tales airlink and of course my device doesn't have the v33 update yet which would be nice because that actually improves the visual quality in some ways i'm told i'd have liked to check that out but i guess now i've seen the v32 way and when v33 finally reaches my device i'll be able to actually see if there's a proper difference that said yeah okay airlink is never ever going to be as clear as running a cable or you know it's just not but the fact that um you have that wireless freedom i i think makes it worth it a hundred times over you know it can be a little muddy at times with um with airlink the big thing is that that game kind of forces you to rotate a lot and i just never 100 percent get used to doing it all on the controller i just mm, it doesn't feel right especially in a sword fight Pressing the rotate button in a sword fight. Come on, that doesn't feel good. And having that index tether just uh, slowly getting worse and worse and worse the more you play, 
Not to mention, uh, at least once or twice in the initial play I had, I actually uh, was attacking a attack by like, some bats, I swung away at it and uh, ended up clipping one of the uh, uh, strings from my pulley system. No, I just lightly brushed it, really. But the fact that that can happen is a real irritant for some games. And Legendary Tales is an example of that. Games where you're just very physically active, that cable's a real bitch. And um, some games just really are better on the Quest 2. There's just no two ways about it. This is such a good device. And that's why I'm tempted to get the battery pack and probably some better headphones, probably the G333s. Not the earbuds, earbuds give me a headache. But yeah, um, those are little purchases I bought. I think that they're, I'm happy with them. I mean, together with 60 bucks and now I have a much more comfortable experience. Should have done it sooner. And another thing, yesterday I reported when I was talking about Linux and VR, that VR chat did not work in Linux. Uh, that was wrong. It does. What I was doing was processing the Vulkan shaders. And in VR chat, for some reason, that just takes forever. The problem is when you launch the game in VR mode, it doesn't give you any indication that that's what it's doing. So when I launched it in desktop mode, then it told me, oh, there's the problem. I have to spend 15 minutes waiting for it to process its Vulcan shaders. What a bloody great pain in the ass. Well, once it's done, it's done. But geez, that was a real nuisance. And that was why I wasn't working. So I was so sure VR chat did work, and it does. As far as Waltz of the Wizard, I might come back to that and see if various Proton versions or something by uh, Glorious Egg Roll is necessary to get that game going. It should work. It's really rare to see that kind of failure with Proton. So, yeah. I'll say just a quick video for that stuff. Now, I suppose I have something else I could show off. Less exciting, or maybe more exciting. So, have a look at this. You're probably like, oh, wait. Don't you have the Elite Strap hooked onto that? In fact, yes, I do. But this isn't the same one. <laughs> this melted. In fact, uh, you can see the melt there. Instantly, this melted one morning. Actually, yesterday morning. So, that's a bummer, huh? It was acting a little bit odd because it actually stopped charging on the official charger. As if I recall correctly, that's what happened. So that's weird. And then I tried a different charger and it worked fine. So I was like, oh, whatever. Maybe, you know, who knows? I don't know. It was instant. So I just plugged it in one morning. Hey, I'm going to play Legendary Tales with this thing. Plugged it in and uh, I noticed the charge light didn't come on. So I put my hand near this and I felt heat. And then as I pulled it out, it deformed the plastic like it was just non-existent. And yeah, so this guy's dead. I'll get it on main and sell it. I guess that's one way to get the 128 gig model. Not that I cared. I do almost everything over Steam VR, so rather has any memory at all, it's not that important to me. But there's a couple of good Oculus games. I mean, let's be fair. It's actually a surprisingly capable little system. I'm just a PC gamer. So yeah, that is uh, sort of a little update video. Quite happy with those peripherals. And if I ever get any other ones, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up. And it is nice to see that VR chat does work. So actually most of the games actually did work just fine in Linux. Which is kind of what I would expect with Proton being so amazingly good these days. The problems really are just that Steam VR is very janky in Linux. Actually, as I said in that video, it's actually jankier than getting the games to actually work. For the most part, that's generally not a huge pain in the ass. And again, there's options there. If you can try different Proton versions and so on and so forth if you're not having luck with a particular game. But if Steam VR sucks, well, you're just fucked. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you guys later.